the National Broadcasting Company presents Radio City Playhouse, Attraction 5. Attraction 5, Special Delivery, starring Abby Lewis as Hilda, a woman tormented by doubt and jealousy. The script was written by Harry W. Junkin, who also directs the production. Here is Radio City Playhouse, Attraction 5, Special Delivery. Maybe you don't believe in coincidence. Maybe you won't believe all this could happen in one day. Or that it's too much to believe that Neil would telephone five minutes after that letter was mailed. Maybe you'll say some coincidence. Or say it. It's the same thing that picks one train out of all the trains in the world. One car out of all the cars in the world. And one railroad crossing out of all the railroad crossings in the world. And... As she writes, her hand sticks to the paper. The noon heat is unmoving, solid, relentless. At the end of the letter, she signs her name. Your loving daughter-in-law, Hilda. And that my fine, prancing husband will fix you. Ellen! Judge James T. Bradley. Ellen! Ellen! Airmail special delivery. Ellen, for heaven's sake, what are you doing? Yes, Mrs. Bradley. I want you to mail this. It's airmail special delivery. You'll need a 13 and a 5. Here's a dollar. Get the stamps at the drugstore. Yes, Mrs. Bradley. If you hurry, you'll catch the 1 o'clock pickup from the mailbox at the corner. I'll hurry, Mrs. Bradley. It's to Mr. Bradley's father in Washington, and it's very important. It's got to get there on time. Okay, Mrs. Bradley, I'll hurry. <laughs> P. R. Yes, you, U.S. government. M N P. Post Office, Eighth Avenue, Thirty First Street, Pennsylvania six seven zero nine nine. P E six seven nine nine. Post office. I want to inquire about a letter. Yes, madam. A letter mailed just now from New York to Washington. Air mail special delivery. When would it get there? Well, it should be there by 9 o'clock tonight, madam. If it's marked special delivery, they'd send it out right away. You're sure it would be there by 10? Of course, I can't guarantee it, madam. But you think it would be? Yes, madam. All right. Thank you. Oh, Neil. How could you? Neil, how could you? <laughs> Hello? Hilda? That you, Hilda? Yes. You sound peculiar. I'm all right. Is it still convenient for me to drop in tonight? I was expecting you. Ellen has the rest of your things packed. They'll be ready. I'd like to see you, Hilda. What do you want? A fond farewell? Hilda. I've got the evening all planned. We can toast each other in nastic acid. I wish you'd listen to reason. Reason? You, you... You said you... Hilda, we can't talk on the phone. You're so mixed up with love and hate, you don't know what to think. I don't want to leave you. I love you. I've told you that a thousand times. I've said it so often that... You almost believe it. Deep down, you believe it. Don't you? Oh, Neil. I don't know. One minute I could claw you apart, and the next I could... Hilda, 
It won't hurt you to talk to me. Will it? It, it always has. I love you, darling. You can't just throw me out like this. There's nothing with Sharon. There's never been anything with Sharon. If only we could... It's if true, only I dear. could believe... It. It's true, dear. Honestly true. I... I just can't believe this is happening to us. You can't mean it. Please see me. Just once more. Please. Hilda. Neil. Neil, do you really think we could get... I'm sure we could. Hilda, darling, I love you. If you could only trust me. But you're so... Oh, I know. I know. Say it. I'm eaten with jealousy. It's true, Hilda. Oh, Neil, I'd give anything if we could. i try not to be jealous. You don't know what it's like. One minute I want to... I know. I know. Don't let's talk on the phone, dear. I'll be up tonight. Just remember, no matter what else you think, I love you. Want to come for dinner? Oh, Hilda, you'll never be sorry. If we can get back together again, you'll never be sorry, I promise. Maybe we can. Maybe. I want to terribly. I can't talk anymore. Come about eight. All right, Hilda. Goodbye. Goodbye. Why is it that one moment I love him to death, and the next moment I want to kill him? I... Oh, the letter. Ellen, never mind that letter. Ellen! 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 Perhaps if I parked in the shade, Mrs. Bradley, the car would be cooler. This is all right, Brooks. What time is it? Uh, Twenty-five past one, Mrs. Bradley. But it says on the letterbox that the pickup is at one. Brooks, where can he be? Oh, he'll be along. It, it says one o'clock on the box. Why don't they clear it at one o'clock? Do you think we've missed him? Well, I wouldn't know, Miss Bradley. Brooks, I'm going to ask for a letter back. Do you think he'll give it to me? Well, I wouldn't know, Miss Bradley. After all, I wrote it. It's not as though it was somebody else's letter. No, Miss Bradley, not when you wrote it. Why the devil doesn't he come? Oh, he'll probably be along soon, Mrs. Bradley. Oh, if I'd only caught Ellen before she knew it. Brooks, there he is. Uh, want me to come with you, Mrs. Bradley? No, wait here, Brooks. I won't be long. Yeah, lady, what is it? Are you going to open that letter box? Oh, well, that's what I get paid for, lady. How much? What? How much do you get paid? What are you talking about? How much money do you make? Huh. I don't see as how that's any of your business, lady. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to Ah, that's but you okay, see, lady. You see, I mailed, I mean, my maid mailed, I mean, I mailed a letter. Uh, you better get that straight, lady. Yes, yes, I mailed a letter. I wrote it, too, just a little over an hour ago. It's in this box. I must get it back. What? I must get it back. I can prove I wrote it. I brought a sample of my handwriting so that you'd know that I wrote it. Uh -huh. It's addressed to Judge Bradley in Washington. It's airmail special delivery, and it's terribly important that I get it back. Oh. I forgot to put something in it that I should have, and it's terribly oh, important. Oh, now slow I... down, lady. You're not making sense. What? What did you put in the letter, lady? Listen to me, please. It's terribly urgent. I'm listening, I... all right, but you're not making sense. What do you mean? I mean there isn't a chance of you getting a letter that's been dropped in this box. But why? I wrote it. It's mine. Mine. I shouldn't have written it. It's a terribly bad, wicked letter oh, that I shouldn't have... Oh, now it's wicked, huh? What? First you say you left something out, now it's wicked. What is in the letter, lady? Listen, I'll give you $500 for that letter. Uh, you will? Yes. yes, right now. I've got it here. The money right in my purse. Keep it there. What? That cop. No, no, across the street. He's watching us. It's broad daylight. Now, don't start waving hundred-dollar bills. It'll be right under a cop's nose. Five hundred dollars for my letter. Must be some letter. Will you give it to me? That's your car over there? Big one with the chauffeur? What of it? Make it a thousand. I can't. I, I can't possibly give you a thousand dollars. I haven't got it. Get it, then. I can't. Okay, lady. But I can't. I can't get a thousand dollars without my husband wanting to know what for. Well, tell him, then. Uh, this letter. You having a little fun on the side? Oh, you. All right, have it your way, lady. Here, $500 right now. Take it. 
Take it and give you me... You flash that dough again, and so help me, I'll lace you one. That cop's coming over. Now, shut up, can't you? Give it to me. Give it to shut me. Shut up, that cop's coming over. I'll follow you in my car. Beat it, beat it. <laughs> I'll follow you. All right, but beat it. Find a place that's quiet. I'll follow you. Sure, you can hang on to a mail truck with a cat. Uh, don't worry, Mrs. Bradley. Where's he going? Oh, probably another box on his roof. Watch him. Well, his traffic's getting heavier. Brooks, he's making that light. Go on, Brooks. Never mind the light. Go on. I can't, Mrs. Bradley. Uh, I'm sorry. You've lost him. Well, I couldn't help it. I'd have run down And just car. where do you think you're going, chum? Oh, I'm sorry, officer, but uh, we're catching a train. Now, ain't that swell. Well, we're in a... Officer, big... please let us through. It's terribly important. To yes, and it's also important that you obey traffic signals. Now, back up. Officer, please, you must let us Look, pass. lady, obstructing traffic. I'm telling you to back up and wait for the green. Now, back up. Yes, officer. You've lost him, you fool, Brooks. Well, I'm sorry, Mrs. Bradley, but if I'd kept on going, I'd have run down that policeman. It's all right, Brooks. It's not your fault. I guess you'd better take me home. <laughs> U.S. government. M. M. N. O. P. Post Office. Pennsylvania 67099. Who's in charge of everything? Well, just what was it you wanted, madam? I asked you a perfectly plain question. I want to know who's in charge of everything. Mr. Rogers is the postal superintendent, madam. Let me speak to him, please. Just a moment, madam. Hello. Hello. Rogers speaking. Mr. Rogers, this is Mrs. Neil J. Bradley speaking. I must see you about something very important. If I came right down to your office, could you see me? Just what was it you wanted, Mrs. Bradley? I can't possibly tell you about it over the telephone. I must see you, Mr. Rogers. Please let me come down. Well, if it's that important, why, certainly. 8th Avenue and 31st Street. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. I'll be down in 20 minutes. Come in, Mrs. Bradley. Thank you. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. Now, what can I do for you? It's hard to know where to start. Do you think that people who aren't really basically bad can ever do wicked things? I beg your pardon? I've done something. Something ghastly. Mrs. Bradley, I don't know quite what you mean. Mr. But... Rogers, are you married? What? Are you? Well, as a matter of fact, I am. Why? Do you love your wife? Mrs. Bradley, what are you talking about? Do you? Why, yes, yes, of course I love my wife. Do you love her so much that sometimes you want to kill her? Not really, Mrs. Bradley. I can't for the life of me understand what it is you want me to do. Well, I... I wrote a letter. A special delivery letter. A letter? A dreadful, terrible letter. That it isn't true at all. It's terrible. And I've simply got to get it back. If I don't get it back, it's my husband's life and my life. <laughs> I've just got to get it back. Mrs. Bradley, there's no use your going on. You come down here to get a letter back. It's quite impossible. Quite impossible. Listen to me. Please listen to me. You don't know what was in the letter. It wouldn't matter. That two lives will be hopelessly wrecked. I'm sorry. How can you be so callous? Mrs. Bradley, the moment a letter is mailed, it becomes the property of the addressee. It's an absolutely unbreakable regulation. Regulation? This letter is murder. Mrs. Bradley, you'd better go home. You're upset. Please let me tell you, please. My husband and I were very close. We were very deeply in love. I think we could be again. Anyway, he was overseas for four years, France mostly. I took it very badly. I was awful about it. I cried at the least provocation. I imagined it with, with all sorts of French women. Oh, no. Oh, I know I'm neurotic. But I just can't help being that way. Just. 
always be jealous. I fight it. I swear I'll never again be suspicious or horrible. But I am. I was always that way, jealous of his work, his business, his friends, everything. Then we lost a baby. I'm a little older than Neil. Mrs. Bradley, this is very hard on you. Why don't you let me send you home in my car? It's no use I was going afraid to... that he was beginning to think that I was too old for him, too old for him to love. He began to see something of another woman. Sharon Elders. I thought I'd go crazy. I used to plan how I could kill her, then kill him. Oh, don't look so stricken. I never got to the point that I attempted murder, but I... Go on. I reached that point today. What do you mean? There is murder in that letter. I I don't understand. Do I have to tell you everything? Can't you understand? That's what I don't want to do. Mrs. Bradley, I can't do anything for you. Really, I can't. I'd like to help you, but I can't. But why? Why is my letter? I wrote it. Nobody else has seen it. Nobody. It can't do anybody any harm if you give it back. I'll tear it up right here in your office. You can tear it up yourself. Nobody will ever know. I swear I'll never tell anybody. Never. Please, Mr. Rogers. I'm nearly out of my mind. Mrs. Bradley, you will have to excuse me. Just after I mailed the letter, Neil telephoned. He's coming over tonight for dinner. And, Mr. Rogers, if that letter's delivered to his father in Washington, I'll never see Neil again in my life. Do you understand that? Never again in my life. You can't refuse me in the name of common, ordinary pity. You've got to listen to me. Please, Mrs. Bradley, people will hear you. I was going to kill him tonight. What? Yes, it's true. I was going to kill him. I planned it all week. I was cold and relentless and incredibly clever. Every last detail was planned. The police would be fooled. Everybody would be fooled. It was perfect. It was a perfect murder. And now you're not going to kill him, are you? You're going home. Please, Mrs. Bradley, let me take you home. You don't understand. I was killing him tonight by taking my own life. He would have followed me because... Because... If I could get that letter back, no one would ever know. Don't you see? Can't you understand? You mean you actually plan to kill yourself and have your husband take the blame? Yes. The letter was to his father, Judge Bradley. The letter was part of the plot. I said that I knew Neil would kill me tonight. The letter was to be the final piece of evidence. Oh, I've been horrible, jealous and awful. But I'm not bad, Mr. Rogers, really, I'm not. I just can't help it. I'll never be like this again. Please help me, please. Well, I... Really, Mrs. Bradley, you make it so difficult for me to know what to do. If you can't. You can't, that's all. Wait a minute. Give me the special delivery desk on three. Special delivery airmail? Yes. Mr. Rogers, you'll never be sorry, I promise you. If you help me, you'll never regret it. I swear I'll never... Hello? Who's that? Oh, Johnson. Uh, see if you've got a letter for Bradley. B-R-A-D-L-E-Y in Washington. All right. They enter all special delivery letters in a book. What? When did you mail it? Today. One o'clock. One o'clock today. Air mail to Washington. Yeah. Hmm. All right, Johnson. No, no, that's all. Thanks. Well? Your letter's gone, Mrs. Bradley. It'll make the plane that leaves for Washington in 20 minutes. Faster, Brooks. We've only 10 more minutes. Well, we're doing 70, Mrs. Bradley. Then do 90. Do a hundred. Please, God, help me. Please, help me get it. Give me time. Please. Passengers to Flight 7 to Washington. Flight 7 to Washington. Now loading through gate number 2. All aboard, please. Is, is that the next flight to Washington? Yes, madam. Leaving in three minutes. I want a seat. I'm sorry, madam. The flight is full. I've got to get on that plane. Well, there might be a cancellation on flight eight, madam. If you care to stand by for an hour, I'll see what Who's I... Who's in charge of the mail on that plane? Well, just what is it you want, madam? If you'll keep quiet, I'll tell you. I want to know who's in charge of the mail. Is that the ship out there? The big silver one? Is that the one that's going to Washington? Uh, yes, madam, but it's quite impossible for me to get... Madam! Madam, come back here! You can't go through there! Madam! Washington, all aboard, please. All aboard, please. Mister, you, 
I've got to get on this plane. Would you sell me your seat for five hundred dollars? I beg your pardon. I, I don't think I understand. You, Miss. I'll give you $500 for your seat on this flight. I'm awfully sorry, but I have to be in Washington myself tonight. Excuse me. Let me by, please. I beg your pardon. Let me by. Your name, sir? Uh, T.L. Haley. Seat 16, Stewardess, I don't have a seat, but I must get on this plane because I've written a letter that's being carried on it. And I have to get to Washington when the letter gets there so that perhaps I can stop it from being delivered to my father-in-law. I should have... Madam, have you a reservation on this flight? No, no, no. I keep telling you that. But you'll have to put somebody else off. I must be on this plate. I must. I must. But, madam, if you haven't a ticket, I... But I'll buy a ticket. I don't want to ride for nothing. But there aren't any tickets left. Will you see the ticket agent in the airport, please? No, no, no. It's this flight I want. I must be in Washington before a letter that I wrote that's on this plane. A very silly letter. Would you mind stepping aside, madam, please? You're preventing the passengers from boarding. Your name, sir? Brandt. T.J. Seat four, Mr. Brad. Stewardess. Sure, I wrote some plate and I simply must... Your name, on. madam? Cook, Miss E.J. Seat uh, 11, Miss Kirk. Stewardess, I must get to Washington before that letter does. I may be able to explain to my father and uh, John L. Frank. Seat six, thank you. Stewardess, for heaven's sake, listen to me. I've written a very silly letter that I shouldn't have written. If I don't get it, my husband... Your name, madam? Mrs. George McDonald. Please, Stuart, can't two, you three, help four, me? Five, six, I don't mean to bother eight, you, but it's nine, so nine, urgent nine, that I get on this plane. If you'd only let me explain it. Stuart, for heaven's sake, listen to me. It's a matter of three. Will you listen to me? Madam, I'm sorry. I don't doubt that your trip is urgent, but you haven't a seat, and I... Oh, stand up! I don't need a seat. It's only that. Madam, we're ready to take off. You must leave the ship. Please, please, let me stay. I'll give you $500 if you let me stay. Please, Stuart. Madam, if you won't get off, I'll have to have you put off. Well, I won't. I won't get off. I won't. I won't. Mr. Hill. Mr. Hill, will you help me, please? I can't do anything with this woman. She won't get off the ship. Oh, all right. I'll get off. Shall I drive you home now, Mrs. Bradley? Mrs. Bradley. What? Home now? Yes. Mr. Bradley will be home for dinner. Some coffee, Neil. No, thanks. Aren't you well, Hilda? Yes, I'm fine. You seem awfully nervous. Nervous? Never seen you like this before. Hilda, please don't worry about things. It's all settled. Isn't it? I guess so. You guess so? I don't want to talk about it anymore. I don't understand you tonight, Hilda. I don't understand myself. What time is it? Quarter after ten? Any minute now. What? Nothing. What do you mean, any minute now? Nothing. You must have meant something. It doesn't matter. Hilda, please, don't brood anymore. I thought I'd come up here and... that we just settled it all. I even told the hotel I'd be checking out tonight. I... I thought maybe I'd come back here tonight, Hilda. I thought you'd want me to. I do want you to. I do. Neil, go for your bags now. Go right now, will you? Please, it'll only take you an hour. And... Hilda, what is bothering you? You're shaking like a leaf. I, I can't stand anymore. Hilda, what is it? You've been acting so strangely all evening. Please, don't cry, Hilda. Tell me what it is. I can help. Darling, it kills me to see you like this. There's nothing to cry about now. Everything's going to be all... Stop! Leave me alone. Don't touch me. Hilda... You might as well go. There's no use of staying any longer. Darling, I've never seen you so upset. Here, drink this. Please, Hilda, have some coffee, please. I don't want any coffee. Please, here, drink it. it it's cold. It'll do you good. If I dropped that cup, you'd have murdered me. Don't. What? Don't answer it. Hilda. Don't answer it, I tell you. You can't answer it in that condition. Leave it. Leave it. Let it ring. Hilda, don't be silly. <coughs> Hello? <laughs> yes, this is Regent 49970. Thank you. Washington must be dead. No. Please come. Hello, Dad? No. It's Neil. 
Well, I didn't expect to be here either. But Hilda and I have everything patched up. Well, I'm glad, too. Dear God, help me. You what? A letter from Hilda? No. No. Tonight? What? Well, uh, you better talk to Hilda about it. Here, talk to Dad. No. No, I don't want to talk to him, do you hear? Control yourself, Hilda. That's something about a letter you wrote. I know. I know I don't want to talk to him. Uh, just a minute, Dad. Hilda, will you control yourself? Did you write him a special delivery letter? Yes, yes. Well, he's lost it or something. What? Talk to him. For goodness sake, stop crying. Tell me. He'll tell you. Tell me. The postman brought him a letter in your handwriting. Special delivery. He took it out, laid it down on the terrace railing while he fumbled for his glasses, and it blew off. Gone. By the time he got down eight flights to the street, it had blown into kingdom come or something. Here, talk to him. What? What did you say? Give me that phone. Hello? Yes. What? Yes. Well, it was nothing to that. Really, I... I... It's all so silly, I... I... You have just heard Special Delivery, as written by Harry W. Junkin, who also directed the production. Abby Lewis starred as Hilda Bradley. Other players in the cast included Lon Clark, Scott McKay, Bernard Grant, Lanny Carville, Mildred Clinton, and Joel Marston. The music was composed and conducted by Dr. Roy Shield. Radio City Playhouse is supervised for the National Broadcasting Company by Richard P. McDonough. Next week, Hit and Run, written by Max Shub. It is the story of a man who made a mistake and made amends in the only way he knew how. In the demanding role of Hal Lawrence will be heard the young American actor Casey Allen, whose brilliant performance some weeks ago on Radio City Playhouse merited a return appearance. We sincerely hope you'll join us next Saturday for Hit and Run, Attraction 6, Radio City Playhouse. People of the war shaken lands of Europe, men, women, and children, still look to the people of the United States for help in this period of hunger and want. For just ten dollars, you can send a care package to relatives or friends in Europe, or if you have no particular person or family you wish to help, one of CARE's member agencies will choose a family for you. Just send ten dollars to CARE, C A R E, New York. The address again, CARE, C A R E, New York. This is Robert Warren speaking. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.